Hello there everybody, it's Subbutter Night Gamer, and welcome back to another video that might be marginally short because I've got a couple projects that uh, I'm gonna be working diligently on. Might take me a little while to get a couple of them done, but let me just put it to you this way. Uh, still working on a theory video, but I'm also working on a Q&A video. And outlines for both are done. It's just recording my actual audio then editing the video, attempting to make it entertaining, adding music, and I'm a terribly, I'm a terrible, I'm terribly incompetent! Anyway. Well, my vision's kinda... My vision sucks. I still couldn't see, though my other senses were still quiet enough to tell me what was around me. She did. She did. Yep. I coldly declared her demise. In the very end, she only managed to find herself in death. I didn't know if it was a fitting end for her or not. That was only for Messenger herself to decide. All I had to think about now was pushing forward. What, that you were hiding something? Someone moved in pro close proximity to myself. A sanitary smell of soap tingled my nostrils. Lilith. <sighs> Welcome to the club. Samael. I cut the irked Samael short. She turned her face away from me in a grouchy display. Well then. Lilith let out a few coughs. Samuel rushed to my side and covered my eyes with some sort of cloth. Probably a handkerchief. Eh, don't worry about it. So water magic heals eyes, huh? Oh, thank you. Someone Samael touched my eyes, and something cold suddenly enveloped them. This that was probably a healing spell of the water school. She made a weak smile. I realized that no words of mine could ease her burden at this point. And so I chose to thank her instead. So I could maybe lighten her mood that way at least. Probably a naked one that needs to put some clothes on. Indeed, we knew next to nothing about her. Not even her stance in regards to the divine calamity in Tokyo Babel. Samael made an exasperated gasp, and I couldn't help doing the same myself. It was before the history of mankind that Lilith fled from heaven, a happening that occurred 6,000, no, 7,000 years ago. Lilith was firm in her choice. She hated the lout that saw her as nothing more than a tool. She would rather travel the wastes of Earth, and after the wandering, grew dull, make a cave her abode. I read that weird. The world had still been simple in those days, for no men yet existed. All that thrived in it were animals, plants, and relics of the past. The hell is this? She reached out. All that filled her breath was sheer curiosity. 
she wanted to find out what on earth that thing was. The withered shard of a once magnificent being, a supreme existence shattered by the one and only true God. As she came in contact with it, her mind was overcome with relentless curses. She screamed. What was that dreaded full thing? She'd never met anything that vile before. That was the moment Lilith ceased to be human. The first woman to this world, and a witch that ruled over the night, she dwelled in the ruins of Edom, her back adorned with the demonic wings, a vile being that cursed this world. Lilith, the demon. That was what she had become. Out of curiosity, what the hell was it that she absorbed? Those that used to be gods, those that used to be angels, those that used to be men. A label of a demon would refer to those that turned monsters once they fell, their hate for the divine usurpers distorting their very shape. However, Lilith alone was different. She was just a human who had got a hold of demonic powers. Or would it rather be more precise to say she was possessed by something? Probably a shard of Lucifer? I mean, if Lucifer, aka, is missing, then... I don't know, my theory is that if... I mean, God obviously, you know, kick Lucifer out, well, what if a fragment of him fell to the earth? Cthulhu! Lilith made a troubled face and shook her head. Samael down. Samael, of course, used the chance to throw her frustrations at Lilith. ただ、わずかな記憶は残っているのです。例えば、苦味。苦味取り込んだ時に感じた強烈な苦味です。数千年経っても記憶に刻まれるほどの。はあ。遠い頻度だな。I had to agree with Samael on this. A snake? Wait a minute. Oh boy. Samuel made another exasperated sigh. Fallen angels and demons were for some reason very commonly associated with snakes. I can name a couple right away. Samael, Astaroth, Leviathan, and then their distant sibling, the white serpent Quetzalcoatl. How the fuck did I pronounce that? Hmm. Lilith agreed with a troubled laugh. Then she fell deep in thought, and after a few seconds, suddenly clapped her hands in an ex explain uh, in an exclamation of sudden realization. An odd sweetness? The Angel of Sugar! Oh! Uh-oh! Well then. I expected that much. Recreated in her image? Hanashio 
私が言うのもなんだけどさ戦いもせずにずうずうしいよね震災が起こったのをきっかけに美味しいところをかっさらおうってことでしょ Well, yeah? いえそうではありませんあおじゃあ何なのよサマエルあなたは勘違いしていますそもそも震災は彼女が引き起こしたものです。ああ、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、To her sitting position on the bed, gave us a tender look and suddenly whispered. <laughs> Lilith made a mischievous smile. Hmm. Samuel made an exasperated face. I didn't show it on my face, but I felt her frustration. What good is a wit? Wait a second. She must have whispered the secret of eternity to God. I finally comprehended the true meaning of this revelation. I froze in shock. No way. My idea couldn't have been true. For if it was, Lilith, Hontai no Kanojanaba, Dokoma de Sasaki o Totokase. She confidently smiled. Understanding its meaning, I felt all sensation momentarily vacate my body. Kanojanaba, Sekaiju Ara Yereba Shoe. So she did. Jibun no Koeto Kizukase no Kotomo de Kiruat. Apparently, Samael too realized the true meaning behind her words. Cerberus, meanwhile, cocked all of his three heads to the side. Is that what you want? Are you satisfied with what you have? みんなは互いに殺し合った胸に秘めた夢を自分が作り出したものだと信じてうんあそうだから彼女は恐ろしい彼女は背中を押しただけ誰もが皆のために封じていたものを解き放っただけ All men had at least one ambition simmering in their heart A young man that couldn't help loving a fair maiden of little years. A girl that couldn't help lusting after her own father. A man that could only experience elation through the pain of others. She whispered and pushed their backs. Give in to your desire. How many could resist a voice of their own desire, ceaselessly tormenting them from within? That's why... You've been able to find her to find her to find her. Yeah. I could see Lilith doing something like that. She'd do it while grumbling, making an exasperated sigh and smirking cheekily in the end. Thank you. I've been able to understand the whole thing. I've been able to understand the whole thing. I've been able to understand the whole thing. I nodded. I knew her tricks now. There was nothing to fear. And more importantly, I couldn't leave Lilith alone. Thank you. Thank you for all of us. Thank you for all of us. She tenderly smiled, a fleeting dream. Knowing that I would likely never see them again, I gave her a nod. I left the room behind. The young Lilith stood before my eyes. I reached out to pat her on the head, but she brushed my hand aside. I sighed. 
Children were my thing, apparently. Then she suddenly handed me a white envelope. The young Lilith gave me a silent nod. As I took the envelope off her hand, she spun around and ran away. I undid the seal and opened the letter. <laughs> apparently, she hated me. But as I glanced in the direction, she ran off, and I spotted her half hidden behind the corner of the corridor, regarding me closely. <clears throat> Those eyes didn't seem to twinkle in the brassiness of a successful prankster. If anything, it seemed more like they were filled with dejection and sorrow. <laughs> a few small letters in the bottom right corner of the page suddenly caught my attention. I lied. Thanks. It seemed those were actually the main point of the letter. Arigato. Noticing my attention on her, she jumped and disappeared behind the corner. Oh well, at least I got the sentiment. Still, it was so Lilith-like to do something like that. I realized my lips were curling up against my wishes and hurried to the cover them with my with a hand. あ、ごめん。それじゃあ、リリス。さようなら。さようなら。サマエル。あなたにとっては嫌なことを聞かされたでしょうね。知らずに死ぬよりずっといいから。ムカつくことはムカつくけどね。天道を切な。どうかあの人を助けてあげてください。あの人はきっと希望です。言われなくたって分かってるよ。でもリリス、一つだけ反論。だって希望なんて最悪の厄災じゃない。Well, you're not wrong there. 何かあったのか。Samael shrugged and shook her head dismissively. Her demeanor felt oddly aloof. I guess the earlier talk had its effect on her. She learned that many of our decisions might not have been our own, that they might have been instilled in our minds by seductive whispers. Whoops! I wonder if I had been affected by them to some extent. Samael, Cerberus, and I left the hospital in silence. Eventually, we found the doors leading to the first stratum. If this place was indeed like the Tokyo Babel we knew, there should be Ginza waiting for us beyond them. And then Cositis, stratum zero, below it. <laughs> Samuel gave me a resolute look. Huh? It took me almost a minute to comprehend what she meant. She gave me a nod. I froze my facial muscles to, so as not to betray the sense of sorrow and disappointment that overtook me. Huh? Samuel embraced Cerberus's small frame. I turned my back to her in an attempt to act nonchalant, but in my heart I felt incredible anxiety. Still, I thought it would be unseemly for me to show weakness in this situation. And so, trying to escape from the eyes of the other two, I stepped beyond the doors of the first stratum. Okay. A strong sensation of relief intermingled with loneliness squeezed my heart as I closed the doors behind me. I knew there was no one left to listen, but I didn't think I could make myself move any other way. Now that I thought about it, this was the first time I ever chose to do anything alone. I remembered running from responsibility out of my own volition, but I couldn't remember a single case where I personally chose to advance forward. Terror overcame me as I realized that. Still, I had to push forward no matter what. I had to go. I had to move. To push forward. I took a deep breath and took a step ahead. Loth was waiting for me beyond this path. She had to be. I didn't think I could finish my trek without such a hope. False or not, the path felt all too lonesome to bear. Mmm. This is gonna lead me to a bad end because I make mistakes all the fucking time. 
確かにリリスの告白は衝撃的ではあったがそれと刹那についていくか否かは別問題だろうそれとも臆したく答えをさまえる貴様にはその義務があるサーバスグラウドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイドウィンチャンネルのサイ私たちは彼女に間違いなく敗北するどうサマウメイドセルフマーキングスマイルをグランスアップアドスカイ自分が誰かに作られたレプリカのせいかな私は少し前から考えていたことがあったの私は誰かに作られた本物の私は神が作ったでは神は誰が作ったのか Good question. So, Kami was a guy's scutta hut. So, no Kami, Dareka got scutta nada to you kotoa, Ariena. Data Kami, Mukara, Maretano. Tanjo Stesuguni, Bano no Sonsani Natano. Chiga Mukara, Subeta, Marena, Ariena. Oh, my wa, Dakara, what she wa, Tatsuno Cassetto Tateta. Stotsme. 神は無から生まれた時何の力もなかった二つ目神が無から世界を創生したというのは嘘だ、yeah, this is of a lot of religious people. 一つ目は一応の理屈をつけることができるから問題ないとして問題は二つ目神古い世界を新しい世界に取り込んだならば古い世界で信奉されていたものも絶対に存在したはず道理ではあるがねえケロベロス私思うのもしそういうものが神の手から逃れて生き残ったとしたらそれは想像を絶する憎悪を抱いているんじゃないかって7000年私服することなど何とも思わないくらいに。それが我らの今リリスとセツナが戦おうとしている敵ということか確証はないけどたださ私たちはどちらにせよそういうレベルの敵と戦うときに何の役にも立たないよきっと<笑>セツナはまだレゾンデートルすら見出せてないリリスを救おうというのは単なる目的でしかないもっともっと根源の理由を探してほしいけど<笑> God damn it. I keep making the same mistake. They were out of time. だが役に立たずともできることはあるだろうやはり我々もサマエルサイレンリシュクヘッドダメ死ねば終わりだよリリスは何か秘策があるのかもしれない賞賛なしに戦うタイプじゃないからでもセツナは He only moved out of his inclination to meet Lilith again Doubtless he never stopped to consider the possibility of himself losing or rather he might actually be purposefully turning a blind eye to the fact 苦手だよねやっぱりまだ使い潰されたいのかなお兄さんが死んで泣く人だっているのにサメルカクトルヘッドスライリーンウィークリースマイル。That was what she would have liked to ask herself. Could a fallen angel like her still produce truthful tears? ルイセン、あるのかなあるといいけど。とにかく、死んだら終わりの刹那のためにさ。サメル considered Cerberus with a resolute look. Cerberus as a hell beast wasn't one to cherish beauty. But nonetheless, He thought her disposition dazzling. Modoro, Kerberos, Astaroto, no Ho Motsko. Anonacanara, Hyoto Surto, Sisha no Tamashi, or Todomaraser, Sehoka Maki Garka Mosirenai. 
In this Tokyo battle, the souls of the deceased would disperse the very moment their masters drew their last breath. There was no reincarnation, nor traversing to heaven or hell. Even wandering the world as a ghost was forbidden to the mortals here. They disappear like ash, like dust. Angels, demons, or humans, all equal in death's embrace. But someone must have invented at least one tool to trap a soul in the long history of the world. At least she could vaguely remember some angel or demon using a power like that. It was at best a bad bet to hope that such a tool still remained in Astaroth's stash. Not to mention that it was the Grand Chancellor of Hell, Lucifuge, who possessed the key to it. Cerberus took a collective sigh with all three of his heads. Quite the plan there. Cerberus uttered a fiery sigh. A broad, fearless smile flashed across all three of his faces. Cerberus crouched down low and indicated his back with one of his heads. <laughs> Samuel hopped on Cerberus's back. Cerberus let out a howl to the sky and lurched forward as if it were the legendary red hair itself. Eight. The first stratum, Ginza, no actual hostiles in sight, at least none that were alive. The street was littered with the burned bodies of other mock copies of familiar faces, burned to a crisp or, rather, sliced and diced by something that had seemed to be hotter than magma. Let me guess, this is where the uh, other person is, whose name I keep forgetting. I had the feeling it was her work. I inspected the bodies closer to find their wounds still relatively fresh. Given that there was no hint of rot as of yet, the bodies couldn't have been there here for longer than three days. I shuddered at the sun gust of chilly wind. The first stratum of Ginza didn't seem any different from the Tokyo Babel I was familiar with. Except for the temperature. I exhaled. My breath turned into white smoke and eventually dispersed into the sky. If Tokyo Babel was maintained at around 15-20 Celsius, then this Ginza was probably around 0 Celsius instead. It didn't snow. The sky was as blue as back above, only the temperature bit at my skin with the chill of winter. Probably a side effect of stratum zero that rested below this floor. Cositis of absolute zero. According to the Divine Comedy, Lucifer himself had been trapped in ice over there. As far as I knew, the two famous traitors, Judas and Brutus, had also been sentenced to eternal torment in that glacial river. In that case, this might have been a perfect place for me to head to. For I, too, have committed the sin of betrayal. I absentmindedly considered the giant clock that served as an entrance to Pandora up above. I didn't get a chance to relish their company for that long, but I had to confess I thoroughly enjoyed traveling together with Samael and Cerberus. If I returned alive, I'd make sure to drop them a complaint or two for leaving me alone here in the end. In any case, I should be on my way. It was my intuition, but I felt that just as the clock was an entrance to Pandora above, so it would be an entrance to something in this place as well. I shifted the clock's hour needle to one, the minute needle to nine, and the second needle to three. The mechanism let out a sound reminiscent of coupling railway cars, and the giant clock opened. I stepped back as incredible cold suddenly hit me from the open fissure. I ingested two of my liquid nutrient packs and used their energy to light a fire inside of my body. To bolster the effect, I even used some of my meager magical energy to cover myself with a flame shield. The ruthless arctic wind, nonetheless, penetrated my skin to the very bones, freezing both my body and soul. Still, it didn't seem like it would kill me as long as I had my fire on. I had to push forward. I dived inside. My travels were over and the final confrontation was nigh. The finale still uncertain, its twists veiled the unknown. 
I steeled my heart for whatever end. Though to tell the truth, later I realized that I was only fooling myself about stealing my heart, for what came later shattered it to pieces like glass. I fell into darkness. Eventually, the arctic wind began to lose its vigor, and I finally spotted something other than impenetrable darkness inside my field of vision. Whoa. I emerged from the gaping hole in the sky, landing on the solid earth. I stood up and surveyed my surroundings. I spent the majority of my time in freefall, imagining what kind of hellish land awaited me ahead. And the scenery? Well, it certainly didn't disappoint. Really? I think it looks pretty neat. A river black as coal tar ran across the barren land. I stooped and tried touching the dark liquid. It was freezing cold. Not in the sense of temperature. It was my heart that felt the chill, not my skin. I felt freezing pain trying to trap my mind from inside. Was it designed so as to make the atonement for one's sins a torment? To make the sinners... Ugh, sorry. To make the sinners feel the literal weight of their transgressions within their soul. I looked around again. Cliffs rose around the sides of the river, stretching beyond the horizon to the far lands unseen. I took a closer look at the giant rocks and spotted something engraved on them. The face of a blasphemous, blood-chilling, vile-looking beast. I felt as if I were surrounded by giants, looked down upon by their imposing eyes. Well, but my personal feelings mattered little in the present situation. I spotted a small boat fastened to a decrepit pier over yonder. I drew closer and jumped on it, undoing the rope tying it to the pier. The moment I did that, the boat lurched forward. It seemed I didn't need a row. Not a single shadow in sight. The sinners that must have been tormented by the icy touch of the Tar River seemed to have vanished. Did they move somewhere after the Divine Calamity? Or could it be they sank down to the bottom of the river for an eternity? No demons around either. I wonder if they all escaped to the place once they realized hell started flooding. Unforgivable. A curse buzzed in my eardrum. I ignored it, choosing, it to, choosing to believe it was a figment of my imagination. Traitor. Another whisper reached my ears, but I couldn't spot anyone or anything as I glanced around. Traitor, traitor, traitor! I'll kill you all, I'll kill you! Hate you. Won't forgive you. Oh my god. I inhaled a deep breath and exhaled it slowly. Then I addressed the voice myself. God, my I shattered the vile tumult like a sand castle with my iron will. The voice vanished. Just as I thought, it came from within myself, the voice of my own consciousness that kept blaming me from the inner reaches of my mind. The river made it surface up a little. That was all there was to it. I prevailed over its curses thousands of times already. What did it expect to achieve at this point? <laughs> the person I wanted to see the least appeared before my eyes. A shadow of Tendonaru hovering above the river. She drifted along the calm water at the exact same speed of my boat. She let out a condescending snicker. It reminded me of Lilith a little, though there was one detail that made their dispositions fundamentally different. The smile of the apparition was as cold as the winter's chill. <laughs> Shut up. You're just a dumb hallucination. Sorry. A heavy, all too cumbersome sin. A torment so vile that brought tears to my eyes. あなたは Silence. She was right. No one could possibly remain sane in my shoes. 
なたの死に場所はこここそがふさわしい呼吸とする裏切り者はその体と心を凍らせる場所僕はリリスを助けに来ただけだ死にに来たも間違いではないかしら違う There was no use getting angry at a hallucination. Still, I couldn't help but continue the senseless conversation. Having the nastiest part of my heart exposed by the very person I would have least liked to do so was an incredibly torturous ordeal. I gave in. I started looking for a compromise of the hallucination. I couldn't die. I couldn't die yet. So it is not a man. Yakoko no Nigena. Anata va Mire no Nikoste Shimokoto no Zondi. We shan't let you have your dreams fulfilled. You shall die in despair and despair alone. You ain't worthy to save the world. You ain't worthy to save anyone. Curses reverberated from inside of my own mind. Voices demanding just punishment of the traitor. Voices demanding for an end befitting my transgressions. <laughs> Naru sighed. <laughs> The hallucination vanished. Good. And so did the sound. The boat continued silently sailing through the river as if nothing had happened. Hmm. So this is what was meant by going to hell. But I had no time to reevaluate my sins right now. I had to concentrate on finding Lilith and her original as fast as possible. Though I admit I had a premonition that she was waiting for me beyond this river. I wondered how she'd meet me. Would it be with joy, exasperation, or sorrow? Maybe none of these. My chest would contract around my heart and cause me pain with every breath of the chilly air. In any case, the end was nigh. Everything would soon be over. Let's go back in time a couple of hours to make the situation a little bit clearer. What the fuck? A crimson light flashed and vanished into the darkness, the flame of the sword in Lilith's hand. Nice weapon. She smiled to herself. The mangled carapaces of ancient demons lay at her feet. Each was a monster easily at the level of a demon lord. Not opponents that Lilith could possibly defeat under normal circumstances. If things went as usual, she'd have been dead before being able to say, huh, after running into these those beasts. <laughs> a beauty with curled hair shivered in the corner. Huh? Oh my god! Isn't that Archistrategos? She pointed her sword at the dying demoness. It possessed a resplendent hilt along with a blade veiling insurmountable magical power. A blade that exuded too much divinity for a demon to possess. She made a mischievous smile. The demoness realized her words proved to be her end, and it was too late to. The very sword that Archistrategos Michael clutched when he commanded God's Legion in the field of battle. Exceeding ten dao sets in a spaghetti sword in raw magical power, it was the strongest weapon that the angels possessed, one that they saved as their last trump card. The demoness opened her eyes in astonishment. Damn good question. Well, that's a pretty Lilith-like explanation. She mischievously, sm she mischievously smiled again. It was no biggie. She just borrowed it from Adam. 
剣は悪魔にのが誰もが知る聖剣これを知らないと言うのかどうか She made a hyena -like、smile. あなたはよほど古い時代に存在したのでしょうね。The demon is likely existed in the age prior to the ascension of the divine god. She fell with his coming and now had been reimagined again. Exactly like the other mocks that Tendao sets in a fought slightly above. The demon has made a sour face but left no comment on a little statement. どうするってどうしようか実のところ特に何か考えがあってやってきたわけじゃないのよね<笑>ただまあ私は私を殺さないといけないって思っただけえ何思い上がるな偽物が勝利敗北以前の問題としてお前が逆らっていいはずがないだろう From what I understand you're really in no place to talk little demoness A shadow couldn't defy the body that cast it Light could make shadows, but shadows couldn't make light. What Lilith was doing was a rebellion against herself, one that she couldn't possibly prove the victor of. Lilith gave the demoness an agreeing nod. <laughs> a cruel smile suddenly curled up on her lips. The demoness froze. Jane Demon Doe! Before the demoness could protest, Lil's sword crashed into and annihilated her head. Nice. Well then. Lilith thought back to her trek to this place for a moment. She slaughtered countless demons on her way. None of them were very much alike. Half beasts, men with scorpion tails, women with curled hair and red dresses, a giant greyhound. Her vague hypothesis would surely prove to be true in mere moments. By the advent of the vilest of monsters that created many a beast, including Lilith herself, and maneuvered the world according to her desires from the depths of hell. One of the ancients that God supposedly vanquished, a withered monster that was forbidden to surface in the annals of history. And hence, even Lilith herself had trouble imagining what her original would be like. She took a careful step forward, almost creeping on her tiptoes. She wouldn't be here without a great load of luck that happened to follow in her schemes, but it was faking her own death that finally turned the tables. She severed her connection with the original and chose the bout with Messenger to fake her death. First, she declared her intention by rebe to rebel by killing another copy of hers that stood by to promptly take her place in case she perished or grew untrustworthy. Oh! She uncovered her location, fought her to the death, and prevailed. In this way, she got her hands on a decoy. Oh! Smart! She'd been wearing Tendal sets in his jacket during the fight, however. It was hardly a surprise that it got ruined. In any case, the original learned of her transgression and promptly dispatched Messenger to take care of the issue. She was lucky. First, both Messenger and Lilith didn't pay particular interest to the situation. For them, killing rebellious copies had become routine. They were too used to the fact at this point. Messenger, as per orders of the original, assassinated Lilith on the third stratum. She didn't suspect that she was an illusion. Messenger informed the original of her success right away, and so the witch promptly severed the last tie she still had with her rebellious copy. No matter how many Liliths died, she could make as many new ones as she wished. In other words, she didn't think much of them, and that proved to be her undoing. Not a single other copy had ever figured out, figured to fake its own death till now. Smart. Second, her innate abilities at creating illusions had exceeded almost every single Lilith, short of the original that came before her. Just a regular copy could never have possessed, or possibly turned herself into a body so realistic as to fool everyone, even her own killer. But this Lilith could. At this point, she could easily make anyone believe a bomb to be a delicious apple. No one would ever be able to tell if it was an illusion up until they bit into it, and promptly ascended to heaven. That's how good she was at her craft. Hmm. With those two exceedingly lucky outcomes combined, they seem to have attracted each other like some five cl clover magnet. Could you please. Could you please put some freaking clothes on? She finally reached the last stop on her journey, the field of her final battle. A girl lay on a giant reddish, meaty-looking thing with her eyes closed. 
She showed no reaction to Elil's presence. It, did she fuck it? Why? Why are you fucking naked? Lilith, by sheer luck, seemed to catch her original completely unawares. She gulped. Victory fanfares that she never in her life dared hope to hear echoed in her head. She didn't hesitate. There was no one there to call her cowardly, and she wouldn't have cared if there was. She darted forward and vaulted up, targeting the neck of her foe. She'd cleave it off and then split the head in twain, destroying the brain within. She'd pierce the heart and destroy everything else inside so thoroughly nothing could regenerate. Then she'd use the Archistrategos to sword to obliterate the last of her remains. Lilith used the last few seconds of luck she received with absolute efficiency. Not wasting her breath to, on talk, not wasting her sight on even considering her original, she proceeded with her operation with almost precision, reaping the life of her foe in the least amount of time possible. What? The body of her foe quivered as she chopped her head off. Lilith ignored it as she continued with her operation. What swirled in her head during that time, no one could tell. She turned the brain into red soup. She pierced her heart. She destroyed all the other parts that constituted her as a living thing. It was an illusion, wasn't it? She had no time to waste. She still had to scorch the remains to ashes. Mighty flames erupted from the tip of her sword, raging like a powerful solar flare. The gray lumps of meat changed to black ash in an instant. Apparently it was. She fought her instinct to fall on her knees and inspected her surroundings instead. An empty throne the color of blood. The original probably ordered her miserable slaves while resting on that seat. She turned back. No one was there. The voice echoed from all possible directions. A malicious snicker. The voice was the same as that of her own, yet it felt grating on the ears. She snickered, she laughed, her voice coming from the very tip of her ears positively pissed her off. She could hear a hint of fear in her own voice. Resisting the instinct to click her tongue, she clutched tightly to her sword, currently the sole pillar supporting her heart. The meaning of one's life, the reason to exist. The inhabitants of this world couldn't even cling to God for such matters anymore, for even the Divine Father had fallen. They had no choice but to tread this land trusting their own two feet alone. Ah. Her laugh reverberated in her ears, almost as if it were coming from within herself. Oh, good. She didn't come here out of her own free will. She danced to the tune of her mistress all along. She sighed. She felt all the calm despite realizing full well that she was in mortal peril. Well, shit. The world turned upside down. Her heart creaked and burst under the pressure. Her body couldn't take it and broke apart. 
her skin separated from her as if flayed, her insides spilling out. Nay, that was a mental image. She sustained no actual damage. Her mind alone suffered the full brunt of that assault. Her very soul trampled under someone's feet. Well, shit. The black of her glamorous raven locks began fading away. Her blue eyes gained the glint of radiant crimson. She had trouble remembering who she was again. All of her memories were under someone else's grasp. All of her memories seemed to vanish one by one. Still, nonetheless, while she didn't count on this exact turn of events, she was still prepared for anything. She knew that her mistress wouldn't be content to kill her for her transgressions. She expected for her to try and take her over, dominate her again some way. And so, she was prepared mentally, at least, for this very situation. With a calm heart, Lilith drifted through the torrent of incredible power seizing her, and used the chance to observe its essence instead of pointlessly struggling. Oh, wow. Uh, gonna be getting quite close on time here. Everyone revered her, everyone admired her, everyone feared her. She continued to drift along the tar black space, and from time to time a memory of her mistress would pop up before her eyes. Lilith dived further down to the core. The world below had been polluted by hatred and hatred alone. With every inch she pressed onwards, she would be overcome with maddening itching that soon turned to pain. If there was the smallest gap in her defenses, her mind would likely end up crushed under the pressure. Understanding that full well, she dived further into the mud. She'd think of him when she felt weak. Hm. Saving the world for his sake might not be that bad an idea after all. She doubted many Lilis if any at all ever chose to live for love of all things. <laughs> Another memory of undulated hatred. A carcass of the Empress whose ardent will survived her body rotting away. She smiled and touched a piece of that flesh. Whoa! Oh, ancient one, art thou scheming to absorb me? To use and discard me like a golden calf, that might just be as well. But you should have known better. You should have known better than trying to make me into one of your idols. One could liken the act to predation. Nay, it was without doubt predation itself. However, under the laws of nature, it is always the strong that devoured the weak, and yet Lilith was doing the opposite. Lilith, who was without a doubt the weaker of the two, faced her foe and devoured her from inside, merged with her. A violent tempest swept through the land, Lilith at its center. The convulsion ceasing, she resumed a straight posture. She was supposed to be expunged from her vessel, but she was still here, self-possessed. She opened her eyes, she sat on the throne, her lips forming an ambiguous smile. She took a deep breath and exhaled it when white fumes, as if discarding the last remnants of the no longer necessary soul. Oh. The human shape that looked kind of like Lilith made an exasperated face. She now had so much hate welling within her, she worried she might burst apart. The girl stroked her own white hair. It would still make sense to have that hate directed at a particular someone. Even God himself, if that was the case. If she wanted to kill God for his transgressions against her, she might as well have got on with it. But that wasn't the case with the thing possessing Lilith. She just hated. Hated all and everything with no actual targets in mind. That's why her hate swallowed all of creation. 
to the destruction of the whole world, she thought of nothing else, failing to realize that the end of the world spelled her own demise as well. I got no fucking clue who's talking. Oh! The girl on the throne addressed the boy standing in front of her. He looked at her with unbelieving eyes. Um... Yeah, I'm going to end it right there, because I'm actually legit- I'm honestly out of time, and I kind of moved a little too much there. Start him zero. Anyway, that's where I'm going to end it. <sighs> I got so- I got so much work to do! Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm kind of- mind- I'm just freaking confused right now, concerning a little bit who the hell- which little this is. But more than likely, I'm going to be heading toward a bad end. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.